Hello everyone! In the previous lesson we introduced the mean field approximation and applied it to the Ising model. Today we apply the mean field approximation to the system of magnetic moments with the positive exchange integral for any pair of magnetic moments. We shall find the magnetization and magnetic susceptibility of such system. In particular, we assume Jij is equal to constant for the nearest neighbors and Jij is equal to zero for other atomic pairs. Magnetization of such system, projection on the z-axis, has the following form, where x denotes the averaged sigma z operator. The parameter x does not depend on i. X lies between minus 1 and plus 1, and X is equal to 0 in the case of mu z is equal to 0. Let us find how X depends on T and H. Recall that the Hamiltonian of the Ising model in the mean field approximation looks like this. Constant E0 does not affect on the sigma z calculation and the second term is the operator's sum of the interaction between each magnetic moment and effective field. In other words, in our approximation, magnetic moments do not depend on each other, but they are located in the effective field. Therefore, the value of sigma z for arbitrary magnetic moment can be obtained in terms of single magnetic moment located in the field H effective. Hamiltonian for the single moment located in the effective field has the following form. Therefore, sigma z can be obtained in the following way. Recall the expression for effective field. Therefore, the expression for x takes the following form. Such dependence of x is referred to as Curie-Weiss equation. Let us find the magnetization and magnetic susceptibility at high temperatures. In other words, T is much greater than H plus X theta. At high temperatures, the hyperbolic tangent tends to its argument, therefore X is approximately equal to H plus X theta by T. Finally, we obtain for the magnetization and magnetic susceptibility the following expressions. The temperature dependence of magnetic susceptibility is referred to as Curie-Weiss law. Note that if the exchange interaction is absent, then theta is equal to zero, so we obtain the Curie law. The value theta is called the Curie temperature. On the previous slide we have shown the temperature dependence of magnetic susceptibility at high temperatures. One can see that the value of chi diverges at temperature tends to theta. Probably this is due to a violation of the conditions of applicability of our solution. Indeed, we obtained that x is equal to power magneton h by t minus theta. In other words, x tends to infinity at t tends to theta. Therefore, the condition t is much greater then h plus x theta is not performed. However, one can see that some critical temperature theta exists at which something happens. Maybe it is a transition to ferromagnetic state. Let us study the Curie-Weiss equation in more detail. Consider the h is equal to zero in the Curie-Weiss equation. Thus, the letter takes the following form. This equation cannot be solved analytically. We shall try to solve it graphically. One can see that at t is greater than theta, the Curie-Weiss equation has only one solution, x is equal to zero. But at t is less than theta, it has three solutions, x is equal to zero, and two solutions, x is not equal to zero. Thus, the main conclusion is that at t is equal to theta, the phase transition into ferromagnetic state occurs. In other words, at t is greater than theta and magnetic field is equal to zero, we obtain zero magnetization or paramagnetic phase. And at t is less than theta and zero magnetic field, 
we obtain non-zero magnetization of ferromagnetic phase. So the value of theta is called the Curie temperature or transition temperature into ferromagnetic state. The physical basis of ferromagnetic transition is the exchange interaction. It is energetically favorable for magnetic moments to align along one direction and to decrease the energy of the system as well as Helmholtz free energy. Magnetic moments alignment leads to the order appearance in the system. In other words, the entropy decreases. If the temperature is high, then though the intrinsic energy of ordered ferromagnetic phase is lower than the intrinsic energy of disordered paramagnetic phase, the entropy of disordered phase is higher than the entropy of ordered phase. So the Helmholtz free energy of disordered phase at high temperatures is lower than the corresponding value of the ordered phase. Denote the order parameter x as a mean magnetic moment of atom. In the case of the order absence, x is equal to zero, due to the magnetic moments have the chaotic orientation, while the mean magnetic moment is the total moment divided by the number of moments. If the magnetic moments have a preferred orientation, then x is not equal to zero, and the order is presented. In this lesson we obtained the Curie-Weiss equation and introduced the Curie-Weiss law. The Curie-Weiss equation determines the dependence of order parameter or magnetization on temperature and magnetic field. The temperature dependence of magnetic susceptibility is referred to as Curie-Weiss law. Note that if the exchange integral is equal to zero, or in other words, the exchange interaction is absent, then the Curie temperature is equal to zero, so we obtain the Curie law. Theta in the Curie-Weiss law denotes the Curie temperature. Curie temperature is the transition temperature into ferromagnetic state. Also in this lesson we denoted the order parameter. The order parameter is the mean magnetic moment of atom. If the magnetic moments of solid have the preferred orientation, then the order parameter is not equal to zero and the magnetic order is presented.